Then I wanted to touch upon this, which is quite interesting. This is courtesy of Matthew Williams' Instagram account. He did a little ask me anything um, a couple of weeks ago, I think it may be. So I took a screenshot of it where he was answering questions from fans and whatnot. And I thought this answer to him, um, you know, answering the question of what would be his favorite Jordan, you know, model to kind of collaborate on was really interesting and refreshing and original. And also, you know, a little bit questionable considering the stuff that he was made going forward. But I thought this was quite cool. So somebody asked him here, would you ever design some Jordans? And if so, which one? And he said, the Jordan 8 low. Interesting, right? I would like to make these. I was born in Chicago and Michael Jordan was one of my biggest inspirations as a kid. I love Jordan brand. Maybe if we all say we want this shoe to exist and share this image enough, it will get made one day. So I guess the picture he's sharing up above is actually his own interpretation of a Jordan 8 low, which in my opinion might be one of the worst Jordans ever because I think a lot of Jordans, with the exception of maybe 11s or something, many Jordans don't really look good once they've cut into lows. You think of the Jordan 1 being a classic example, you cut those bad boys into lows and they look like legitimately like they ran out of material. It just looks horrendous, looks horrifying. The icon of most Jordan models is the fact that they are kind of knee height, sometimes just above, sorry, not knee height, <laughs> I'm joking. They're not flipping Ricardo TC Air Force Ones. They're sort of like ankle height, just above the ankle. But when it comes to having actual low sneakers, like running shoes and make those to be basketball trainers, I'm not a fan of them. Similar to the nowadays, you get a lot of these basketball, um, you know, sneakers that are made with these new gen stars. I think the new ones, the, 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 the Jam Around ones, they, a lot of them are kind of, you know, shoes that you would describe as kind of regular sneakers and i'm assuming most of them have quite um interesting or dynamic outsoles and grip that kind of alleviate or can kind of uh, replicate any sort of um, security or protection you might have got from the shoe kind of covering your ankle and kind of centering you that way maybe that's the kind of thinking behind it but regardless of the design principles the technology the innovation behind it i just hate all jordan lows I think with the exception, like I said, of 11s, I think, I don't think any Jordan looks good in a low. I think they all look terrible. But for whatever reason, uh, Matthew Williams, I think maybe because, you know, just to be a little bit different and to kind of, you know, stand out from the rest, he's gone for a model that I think is also underrepresented and doesn't get enough respect in terms of the Jordan lineage, in terms of the Jordan 8. The regular Jordan 8s are definitely one of my favorites, you know, similar to like the Jordan 6s and 7s. Either side, they really go pretty well. But the 8s are really good because I think the colorways are banging. You've got the aqua colorway. You've got the number one I saw, like a white y ready colorway that's kind of like a fire one. So they kind of, you know, I like that kind of classic 80s, 90s kind of, you know, um, color scheme where it's like two or three four colors nothing too crazy i love the little addition of this little um pattern here that reminds me just above the um, the back of the hill that reminds you of the section that they have on the air tech challenges like it reminds you of those old kind of basketball sorry the basketball uh tennis court shoes that nike used to make back in the day or those kind of cross trainers where they'd have like a little um panel that you could make you know you could add little patterns on it and whatnot that maybe match some of your lycra that you're wearing or just kind of throw a little bit of an extra detail going forward on them but from what we can see here this jordan 8 looks like maybe a mock-up that he maybe was putting together um in t in hopes of getting made with jordan brand or something that they actually worked on but it got scrapped and never actually got done because from the picture itself it looks like a picture that you would have seen on the alik site even the font of the jordan one shows like jordan 8 low you've got the mock-up of the shoe if you look closely it does look like it's been put together in photoshop or maybe it's been rendered or something i'm not really too sure but maybe it does exist a version of this in real life or there's a couple psd files out there floating around but i did think it was a really interesting and creative approach to jordan brands because you know most people out there they will just go for the typical kind of jordan one jordan fours and whatnot and kind of trudge out the same old nonsense and it gets very boring very quickly and you know with the plethora of flipping jordan ones out there sometimes because that model has been you know you know rinsed into the ground and beat like a dead horse even though it's one of the greatest base models of all time you can easily mess it up if you start to do too much or if you think you're too clever and you want to kind of present a new kind of um, idea behind it and use it as a canvas it can go really crazy or really left really quickly and there's also opportunity to, to rewrite things narratives and to rewrite kind of appeals because look at the jordan 2 i remember when vashti 
did a collaboration with the Jordan 2 back in the day. I think it might be one of the first women ever to do a collaboration with Jordan Brand. And don't get me wrong, it wasn't her fault because I think that original retro, the actual model itself was doo-doo. Like Nike didn't spend a lot of money in retooling, in kind of, you know, um, trying to rebuild that original Jordan 2 silhouette from the ground up. So by the time Virgil did his Jordan 1, or again, that's another good example of another Jordan that's a good in a low. When he did his Jordan 2 in a low, it was really good because they actually based that model off of the old school vintage pairs. That's why they had all the crackling on it and make it look like it's been kind of, you know, um, sitting in storage for a while. But the, act the actual base model, the, f the form of it, the silhouette, the shape was all of it. The tooling was based on the original shoe, kind of built from the ground up, kind of similar to what Adidas were doing with Stan Smith 80s and campuses and superstars way back when, when they were getting kind of re-retroed and kind of pushed back to sneakerheads and whatnot. So that's a pretty good kind of adage to go by. So I'm, I'm curious to see if this actually picks up any steam, if this goes anywhere. I've got to give credit to Matthew Williams for choosing something a little bit out there and not going for the same old tired models, Jordan 1, Jordan 3, Jordan 4, Jordan 6, you know, whatever it may be. He's kind of going for stuff a little bit out there to kind of, you know, carve a little bit of a niche for himself going forward. Do, do they really fit the elite aesthetic overall? Probably not. But I still think it's a good, tasteful approach or something. Um, if anything, I think most of his Nike collabs, outside of the ones that he does, where they're kind of the running esque ones that look like you know stuff that something that you'd wear you'd wear in the streets of Tokyo or something. The other ones, when it comes to the Air Force Ones and um, what was I thinking about? Yeah, just the Air Force Ones for the most part. I like that he has two approaches that he could take. He can really take the maximalist, futuristic approach with the other shoes he has. I forgot what the name of it, the kind of running shoe ones that he does. But they're not really, no, they're not, they're not leaks actually. They are, they are his own thing. I'm mistaken. So I think he's got two collaborations. He's got the M, what is it? M, uh, MW and Nike, which is basically his kind of fitness, functional, performance type of stuff that he does because you know he's a kind of a, an amazing creative and you know super rich playboy bachelor guy who does burpees and kettlebell swings in his amazing prison mansion so of course he's got to be decked out in the flyest gear so when he's pumping himself on a flipping you know illico machines and whatnot and rogue you know pulling himself up on rogue flipping um pull-up bars it's nice to have those kind of really futuristic pairs of shoes to kind of set you apart from everybody else out there but then he also has the ability to do like relaxed casual lifestyle type of shoes and not go too crazy with them like even the air force ones are really tastefully done i feel like the material upgrade was cool and then the little addition of the roller coaster buckle type thing hardware on the strap was also really awesome even though it probably didn't sit too right and it probably weighed heavy on the strap and made it look dainty and floppy over time i still think the approach is really good in terms of trying to you know keep the air force one high basic and just try and adopt those really classic colorways of like white and black black and white the colors that you'd maybe see you know made popular or famous on like sneaker catalogs and magazines that you should read back in the day so i thought that was pretty cool so let's see how that goes man and where this takes him i do like, like i said before it's a fresh approach it's something interesting it's something to really kind of you know bother about and to kind of pay attention to and who knows he may do what virtue did with the jordan 2 he may do what you know union did later with the jordan 2 and actually make the jordan 8 low a thing where people actually want to wear it similar to what even travis scott did with the jordan with the jordan 1 low even though i still think the jordan 1 low is a horrendous shoe travis scott kind of you know made them cool or made them somewhat relevant again even though people were usually buying jordan 1 lows as a kind of a cope or as a consolation prize if they didn't get the actual jordan one they wanted similar to how people buy jordan 1 mids instead of just buying the highs because you know you're not going to leave here with nothing, right? As Denzel Wonsigen would say, right? I'm going to leave you with something. So I definitely understand that vibe. But yeah, big up Matthew Williams in general. Um, that looks pretty cool. Eager to see if Nike or Jordan Brand do end up picking this up and going forward because I like to see other colorways because I think the black would look pretty cool. But like I said, I can't be wearing Jordan 8 lows. I just can't, man. Just not my vibe. Hate them more. I think they look terrible in my opinion. But hey, 